Today I'm going to talk about the iPad 2. Witness this, an iPad 2. Um, I just recently got mine after waiting many weeks to have it shipped in from China and I've had it uh, half a week now and I've had a chance to really kind of compare it to my old iPad 1. And I think a million people have reviewed these things, so I don't think I'm going to be telling you anything particularly new, but I'll go through the points anyway. First off, um, it's definitely lighter. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it that this is easier to carry, and uh, it's thinner, and it's faster. Well, that's really the key things about it. It's, it's thinner, it's faster, it's lighter. But more importantly, and let's see if you can see it here, look at the edge here of the iPad 1. You can kind of see the glass up a little bit over the top, and you can see the not exactly sharp edges, but they're definitely angular edges, whereas this unit is rounded. And even the top, it's really hard to tell, but the glass kind of rounds down to the aluminum, whereas this one, the glass is sharp, -ish, more sharpish anyway, to the aluminum casing. And that makes this one more comfortable in the hand. There's, there's just no doubt about it. It wasn't that the old one was uncomfortable, but you would notice the f you would notice the angular edge in your hand, particularly if you carried it for a long time. But this one is is lighter and easier. It's easier on the hands when you've got it down. It's 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 a better form feeling for the for the hands. That said, alternatively though, it's worse for the connector dock because it's harder to put it in because it, it feels like it's at an angle when it isn't. And I haven't tried it on the headphone jack, but if you look, the headphone jack is kind of, let's see if I can turn that the right way, and you can see it. You probably can't see it. But the headphone jack kind of curves away as well, and it appears that the jack will sit part of it out of the, of the thing. So it, <clears throat> it's not quite as aesthetic looking there, uh, and it, that probably won't be a problem. But the bottom one definitely is harder to put them the dock connector in, and, I, and I'm almost certainly going to have to buy one of the uh, the base units, which I have for the old one. doesn't work on the new one, of course. That's the way the accessories games goes. It's faster. Frankly, I had not noticed that the old one wasn't fast enough, but when you get this one and it's faster, you notice it, it particularly at loading big programs like GarageBand. I'm, I'm reminded of when I went down and saw my first compact 386 computer running DOS and after having years of running PCs, real PCs, 8088 PCs and 8286 AT class machines and went down and saw the 386 and you know type in what do you do when you sit down at a, a blank computer doing nothing you type DIR and it just it scrolled so fast you couldn't see it it was amazing you couldn't read it <laughs> I know that sounds quaint now, but at the time you could you could read the directory listings when you type DIR and DOS as they scrolled along the screen. It was kind of hard on an AT, but it was impossible on a 386, and it was like, oh, wow. It's not quite that drastic, but you do notice the feeling. You definitely do notice it. The other big feature for the iPad 2 is the camera. There's one, there's the two, front and rear facing. If you're thinking of using them for still photography, though, they're terrible. Don't bother. They, even in bright daylight, they produce grainy, poor quality images. Um, it's better than, I suppose, not getting the picture of the UFO or Bigfoot flying over, but apart from that, they're, they're not adequate. For video, they're better. The HD video out of the back doesn't look horrific. It doesn't, it doesn't look as good as it could, but it's at least it's the right resolution, and it's um, it, it's decent at that. You could use it for that, 720 resolution. I suspect that the main area where this is really going to come in, these cameras are going to come in good, is not from photography, but it's going to be from scanning, inventory apps, um, a lot of basic photography. I could see how a paleontologist or an archaeologist could be documenting things and using the iPad to mark locations and and I'll do all the meticulous field notes that you need and then snap a photo to go with it and embed it. So I mean there's a I, I think there's a world of applications, but just for 
taking family snaps and things. No, it's it's not adequate. And and you know I'd look forward to it in a later version to have a better camera when they can when they can cram one in here because I think people will want it if only for those purposes. Well, one of the other things that they have touted about the new iPad 2, which is not specifically the iPad 2, but in a way it is, is the amazing magic smart cover, which, as they argue, does in fact just flap on and, and work. You peel it back and the iPad opens itself up, close it, and the iPad turns itself off. Um, all good. It's not, you can't fold it back like this, it blocks the camera, but conveniently the camera's far enough over that you only have to lay that back and you can still use the rear facing camera. The intent of course is that this thing, and it does take just a touch of practice to know where to go, but it folds like that and it either puts your iPad up like this on a stand or it sits down like this for typing. And that works very well, uh, particularly the typing phone. My old case didn't have that. I know that the Apple cases used to do it, uh, but I never had an Apple case because they were too expensive. And uh, uh, that's a remarkably big improvement when you're setting the iPad down on a table and just either reading or, or typing. It, it doesn't really matter. That's a great position, and I now wish that I had gotten that kind of case on my old iPad, or at least one that simulated that position. But I did. Uh, things I don't like about it, and I don't know if you heard it, but I've just been kind of moving it around here, and I have actually managed to... This this doesn't stay clamped quite tight enough, and you can, in a backpack, or can just kind of flip that thing, and it, it just keeps turning the iPad on and off. And if you don't like that noise, uh, it's annoying a little bit. And... Um, the other thing people complain about is that it's just a cover. It doesn't cover up the back of the, of the iPad. Uh, I'm not so worried about that because <clears throat> with this iPad, which is and they're a year old, and well, you can't really tell, but there's, there's really no problems with it. I, I virtually never kept it in a case. Um, I just kept it in my backpack and pulled it out when I wanted to use it. And um, so it's, um, I think it's durable enough. You know, I can fling it around like that, which is what I always used to do. I do with this one too. They're, they're pretty durable. And then here's one thing that's kind of odd. Um, by the way, the inside of the case is gray. You know, my orange case on the outside, high visibility orange for me, I thought might as well try to make it harder to miss. The inside is always gray, and it's a soft uh, material that's designed microfiber. It's designed to clean your screen. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. Maybe I can cut to a, maybe I can cut to a, a different shot but you might be able to see that, in fact, instead of cleaning the screen, it leaves lines right here along the screen where the folds are because they don't touch the screen. And so I've actually now got stripes on my screen, in addition to fingerprints, because it doesn't seem to erase them either. And I don't know if you're supposed to rub it like this periodically, but that would only make the uh, things better. This time around, I bought the 3G model. Um, I had a 16 gig Wi-Fi only model on the original one. And I never really had any problem with that. Hey, once in a while, I wanted to use the internet and I didn't have it. And that's very frustrating. And that's why I got the 3G model, um, is the knowledge that I can turn it on and use it when I need it. And sometimes I need it. Um, you know, there are things I can do with the iPhone that are not as convenient, like for example, have um, software log me in ignition, which allows me to get into computers of mine or my clients and work on them when I'm out in the field. And it works much, much better on the big screen. Or terminal programs, uh, 5250 emulators or SSH programs work much better on the iPad than they do on the iPhone, simply because you're trying to map a full screen to a well, to a full screen in this case. Um, <clears throat> so there were a few instances where it would make sense and it would mean money to me to do it. So I, I went ahead and sprung the extra 120 bucks for the Wi-Fi or the 3G unit. You see, do you hear it? Keep it, you hear it? It's because it actually will flip just enough 
when you, this little flap at the end will flip just enough to activate and deactivate the thing. Um, just, just there in those motions. Now it's not, but it was. And the other difference is, is that this is a 32 gig versus this, the, the 16 gig. And, and again, I never really had any problem with the 16 gig because what takes up all my space it, on my iPhone is my music. And I don't use that on the iPad. It just isn't convenient as a music player. I don't quite get that. Um, sometimes it's nice if it's background in a game or something, but it, it's not necessary as a music player. Uh, so I didn't really care. But now with the, the HD camera and the possibility of not just HD shooting HD footage, but editing HD footage, which is going to mean using the camera connection kit and importing it from my iPhone directly into the iPad. Then I'll be able to use it in iMovie. Uh, and, and I need space. I mean, you have to have space to edit video. It's just that simple. So I felt that you know, more space is better, but I was couldn't afford it as it was uh, at the uh, 32 gig. But um, 64 would have just been too much, and I just couldn't have couldn't have made it fly. You can just hear this thing turn on and off, can't you? <clears throat> that's that magic cover that's just not quite magic enough. Um, all in all, the iPad 2 is an improvement over the iPad 1 in every way that counts. I mean, yes, it, it doesn't have double the storage for the base model, so I guess you could say it's not an improvement, but but there's still plenty of latitude in, in how much space you can purchase, and the speed is better. Everything seems... I, I'm not having any problems with it. I'm not having any Wi-Fi issues or any 3G issues and anything like that, so... All in all, I'm happy with the purchase. I wish the magnet was just a little bit stronger right there so I wouldn't keep hearing that click, 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 click noise. Um, and I wish these covers weren't so expensive because I could consider getting more than one in case I'm feeling in a blue mood instead of an orange mood. But um, I'm sure Apple is hoping that you will do that, and I'm not going to. Anyway, great product, though. Otherwise, you should buy two.